Hello and welcome to the first episode of Learn German with the Bible. In this video series we will go through a German Bible word by word and explain and analyze the particularities of the German language. I think it's best if you already know some basic German or do another course somewhere else. But if you are an absolute beginner, feel free to join because we will go through every word. Feel free to ask questions, but focus on a linguistic aspect or not a theological aspect. I am not a teacher, but I am a German native who grew up in Bielefeld and nowadays I live in Berlin. I will use bibleserver.com, which is the website that the German Wikipedia page uses for uh, quotations. It has a few cool features like showing multiple translations at the same time. So uh, let me show it to you. I will switch to the German language of this website. And now when I click on the book selection, you will notice that the books are a bit are named a bit different from the English. So there is uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Matthäus, Markus, Lucas, Johannes, which are all kind of the same. John, Johannes is a bit different. Um, then we have Apostelgeschichte, which is the book of Acts. Apostel meaning apostle, of course, and Geschichte meaning story. Um, other than that, the most books are kind of the same or a direct translation like Offenbarung is a revelation. There are a few differences like Petrus that is uh, Peter in English and Jacobus is uh, James I think. Okay now regarding the translations. Uh, when I click this button it will show me the names of uh, all translations that are available. When I click on all translations, I will get also translations in other languages. But let's stick to the German ones. Um, das Buch, I don't know about that. I have never read it. Um, Einheitsübersetzung, that is the translation that the Catholics use. Um, and it's also the one that is mostly quoted on Wikipedia. However, sometimes they use very unusual words um, then Elberfelder, this is probably the most exact German or most accurate German translation. However, it uses very many unusual words and also unusual grammar. So if you want to learn German, I would stay away from this. However, if you want to study the word of God, then you really should look into this. Um, Gute Nachricht Bibel and Hoffnung für alle, both of these are communicative. Uh, translations. They are written in today's language and I recommend both of them for language learning. Luther Bibel, which has its roots in the translation of Martin Luther in the 16th century. It is quoted very often, however it has very formal language um, because it sounds very um, elevated and poetic. So it might not be ideal for learning German. However, there are many people who like the translation. Yeah, and also many words are not in today's language. So I, I don't recommend it for language learning. I have no experience with the Menge Bibel. Same for uh, Neue Evangelische Übersetzung and Neue Genfer Übersetzung. But I'm sure there are good translations. Uh, Neues Leben, I think that will be the one that we use. Because it is written in modern German and there is also a English variation of this. It's called in English uh, the New Living Translation. Okay, a Schlachter translation. A Schlachter is a Swiss translation. I think it's a really good alternative to the Catholic um, Einheitsübersetzung. If you do not like the Catholic background, then I recommend you read this instead. And I have no experiences with Zürcher Bibel. Okay, before we begin. Um, if you want to learn any language, I recommend you use some type of vocabulary training, um, like flashcards or an app like Anki. Studies have shown that if you know your, your vocabulary, then everything will become easier. And whenever we come across a new or an unknown word for you, then you might want to add it to your vocabulary list. So let's begin with Genesis.